Hi, I'm Barbara from Hoopin Minterhaven and we are extremely excited to be the first UK partner for real-time animal rescue. We were hoping to do a live stream but sadly the internet here isn't the best so we're doing a video and then that will be put on the real-time site. But this is mainly, as it's our first video, we're going to tell you sort of the past, present and future about the organisation. And then while I'm telling you that, you can look at the antics of some of our animals, which over the coming videos and live streams you will get to know about. But we are a multifunction charity. We do rescue, rehabilitation, rehome and retire of small animals and livestock. And some of our animals stay here to become part of our education and therapy teams where we go into care homes and schools for therapy and educating people on animal care and welfare and on what we do as a rescue. And seeing the animals going from the sad rescue cases to happy healthy homes or into our education and therapy teams brings us and a lot of other people a lot of happiness. I mean doing rescue it's expensive, it definitely costs money. So I ask if you would like to help us in our rescue and education journey, please donate in the donation link. And we also have several ideas for you to help us financially, which I will explain later. I've been involved with rescue and education and therapy for about 25 plus years. I've always been independent. I left home to, for, to live in employment the day I finished my exams. And I've had a vast experience in all forms of animal welfare, having worked in a small holding and worked in the large and small equine and agricultural, commercial and private businesses. So I've got a varied experience of different ways of doing things and how you shouldn't do things, having seen quite a lot in the different employments I've been in. We've also done Riding for the Disabled, which extended our passion for the rescue and therapy work. I've worked all my life and I went to work in Sark in the Channel Islands as a carriage driver about 28 years ago. I got an injury there and came back to the UK. I then had my son and I've been a single parent with him for 28 years. But he had health issues and it, that's what started us in the animal therapy. Because I've always had pets and we got pets for my son which helped him with his health issues. And then friends asked us to visit with their children and extended it to their family and friends. My son is now in excellent health and in full-time work and he does help with the rescue. We are strong, determined people and we've overcome discrimination and we understand the barriers of people with health issues, to how they live and have proven that they can live as full a life as everyone. And we also understand that quite a lot of people, especially children, don't understand animal welfare or have had a bad experience of it so they don't know how to care for animals correctly. Sometimes it's ignorance, sometimes it's arrogance. It sort of varies with the amount of animals we've had in. But we started living, we started rescuing pets and then wildlife and then horses and then livestock. And this turned into our not-for-profit organisation which was at a farm which had a lovely landlord who sadly unexpectedly died and her family were quite money orientated so they put in planning for the farm and so we were given a year's notice and then we then had to find somewhere to move to which proved quite difficult. We had a lot of support from the village because we did quite a lot of um, fundraising and open days but the farm wanted to put in buildings so we had to move. And we've then had to move several times since due to not being able to find a good enough place, really. And I'll explain more about our moving later on in the video. But everything costs money, so I ask if you'd like to help us in our animal rescue journey and our education journey, please donate in the donation link. And we've got several ideas for you to help us financially, which I'll explain later. But, but we moved to the East Midlands, which is in the middle of the UK, and we've survived testing times over the last few years. We've had Brexit, which made people less financially secure and reduced our donations massively. In 2019 and 20, we had drought and then we had flooding. 
would raise the costs of food and bedding. And we had to relocate due to our premises flooding several times. We then had COVID, which completely shut us down. And off requests for help shot up, but our donations massively reduced. Um, then we had a cost of living crisis, which has been in lots of requests again for help due to health and financial issues. And I mean, we've had a large influx of requests from people, but you know, I mean, it causes a lot of stress and sadness if you have to give up your pet. But knowing that we would take in their animals has helped a lot of families cope with having to sign their family pets over. But I mean, during the cost of living COVID Brexit, an animal force focused business can't just shut its doors and do nothing. We still have to keep going, which we did. A lot of charities have closed down due to the issues sort of over the past few years, but we're still here. And our approach has enhanced the charity's reputation. We've been nominated and received many awards and we've built a strong platform ensuring we have survived a few difficult years, mainly because myself and my son continuously strive to push the boundaries, embrace new ideas and grow the charity, building on the work we've put in before and during the formation of the charity. And this is continuing. We spent hours applying for grants and are extremely grateful to any grant givers for funds and for supporters for donations, however small. So if you'd like to help, please donate. We will be extremely grateful. Now, Hoopman's Miniature Haven registered as a charity with the UK Charity Commission in July 2018 to allow people to see we were a transparent charity. All our accounts are online and you know, we are transparent with everything we do. But it took six months of communications and paperwork to register as a charity due to the animals and the education being quite high commitment in security and, exper and expertise. I'm sorry about the noise, you will understand what that is later in the video. We also CPD accredited, registered with the fundraising regulator and a voting member on the Social Farms and Gardens organisation which helps promote the care farms and helps promote our open days and our fundraising. And we are once again looking for new premises sadly because when we moved to here in 2019 and we have the use of grazing in two barns. We've now got a small grazing area in one barn and we've got to buy bedding and forage from the farm 365 days a year as most of the animals come into the barns at night and during the autumn and winter, hence why we've got quite a few in here at the minute because our fields are a bit wet. And also the farms changed to commercial storage and the barns have been turned into indoor storage. The fields have been hard caught over and turn into outdoor storage. And as you can hear, we've got quite a lot of noise. This is, qu this is a quiet day, to be honest. Um, and we have heavy goods vehicles constantly at the farm, so we can't have any public at the farm or any fundraising events, which restricts a lot of what we do and restricts a lot of our income. But, I mean, applying for premises, in the UK, we have farms owned by private landlords, county council and national trust. The private rents are high and usually short term and they're not secure. We've been in private rented farms for several years and we, I mean, we need to get out of the private rented sector because it's a private rented farm we're in at the minute. Because um, when you spend money and finances and sweat and tears to get the property up to a high standard, private landlords then give us short notice to leave or pay a vastly higher rent knowing we're unable to afford that high rent, but we spent a lot of time and effort raising the level of the property condition um, so they can then offer it at a massively higher rent. There's also the County Council. In the UK, the County Council are responsible for services across the country. And years ago, councils started selling off farms, which they own, to raise funds to use elsewhere. Some still own the farms, which they lease out to people to use um, they put the farms up for tender, which goes through different stages, and you have to pass and get chosen to go through the next stage in the process. And we have applied for quite a few council farms. Quite often we've been second. But the tenders are for 7 to 20 year leases. I mean, you first put an expression of interest in, then if you get through that, you get booked to a view another farm, 
then put in a basic business plan, then a farm action plan, then a full business plan and offer what annual rent you would like to pay. It's then shortlisted for interview and then you know if you've got the farm. I mean, I say we've not been successful due to either a large amount of applicants, our rent tender's not been high enough, as even though the farms are supposed to be a low rent, a lot of people just offer a massive high rent, which we can't compete with. And some farms are not interested in our rescue or education journey. And you know, sadly, finances seem to be a bigger part of the council farms than what they should be. The other landlord is National Trust, which is the conservation charity. And we've they've recently changed their farming logistics, really, to go from agriculture to conservation and nature. And they, again, are not interested in our rescue or our education work. Sorry about the noise. And we've been in the final three for quite a few farms. And we also got to the penultimate stage before filming for National Trust Farm of a Lifetime, which was on the British Channel 4 TV. Um, but sorry, we didn't get through to the TV stage for that, which would have been fantastic even if we hadn't won, because it would have been good publicity. And we also spent six months negotiating with a heritage farm on building a contract, which took hours of our time. We visited the farm, we discussed developing a contract. But sadly, they we didn't know that they had no funds available for the animal management position we were contracting for. Um, so it was a waste of time, really. But during this process, when we thought we'd had this contract, we didn't apply for any of the properties, one of which we were told we'd been ideal for. But we know we can't turn back the clock. Doing rescue, we wish we could turn back the clock, but obviously we can't. We're in the process at the minute of applying for a small county council farm and we've got through the first four stages and we're doing the fifth stage. So we have got everything crossed. But everything costs money and again, if you'd like to donate, we would be extremely happy. We also offer a variety of ways. And we'd like, if possible, you could share our website and share our social media site and donate via a donation link. We do have a Friends of the Charity membership, which is £24 a year for adults, £12 for children, elderly or disabled, and for that you receive regular updates and exclusive content. We've also got Sponsor an Animal for £24 a year, which when you think about it is £2 a month, which is less than the cost of a coffee, and you receive regular updates on your chosen animal and receive a birthday message and or a video. We also do a Sponsor an Enclosure, for £120 where you get your name on one of our enclosures. We have a business sponsorship where you sponsor an animal with your products for a year. And when we've relocated to new premises, we're going to restart our team building experiences, our corporate volunteering, volunteering, animal experiences, courses in animal health and welfare, our work experience and apprenticeship places. But I mean, it's a fine sort of bit. We are passionate, we are organised, we are hardworking, we are dependable, we are committed, we are motivated. We succeed in everything, no matter how difficult it is, and there's always a solution. We aim high and end up with the required result. Both myself and my son were bullied at school, but the animals have been support to get us through. And as a registered charity, we've done everything in our power to keep this charity going. There's a lot of charities and businesses have gone under over the last few years, but we haven't, we're still here. We've used personal finances, including savings and friends and friends have helped us to keep this going and we are committed to continuing the rescue with high welfare and best practice systems to demonstrate the care of our animals we work with the animal welfare act on the five freedoms that's heidi and really we'd like you to help us thrive rather than just survive which is what we're doing at the minute we've had articles in the magazines and on website and and you know really people are part of the nature and everything we value ultimately comes with that and everything we do has an impact on it and we depend on it and it depends on us the natural world should be valued and assist the foundation of our well-being and pros prosperity and we cannot fix things for people but we can try to fix things with people thank you for listening we will be doing a lot more videos and hopefully some live streams and again if you'd like to donate we are Hoopens Miniature Haven, the first UK partner of real-time animal rescue, and we will hope to see you soon. Goodbye.